Imagine a vast, sprawling family tree stretching back through countless generations, encompassing every human alive today. Mitochondrial Eve and Y-chromosomal Adam. Scientific concepts born from the study of our DNA. Mitochondrial Eve's lineage survives in every living person. Y-chromosomal Adam's Y-chromosome in all males today. A story written in our genes, tracing our ancestry, understanding how we are all connected, discovering our species' incredible journey. Let's dive into the world of our cells. Inside most of your cells are tiny structures called mitochondria, which have their own DNA. You get your nuclear DNA from both parents, but mtDNA is inherited exclusively from your mother. So, the mtDNA in your cells comes directly from your mother. If we follow this line back far enough, we converge on a single woman mitochondrial Eve. Mitochondria, the powerhouses of the cell, generate ATP, the cell's energy currency. They convert food into energy through cellular respiration. Oxygen is vital, powering everything from blinking to running. Once free living bacteria, mitochondria formed a symbiotic relationship with cells. This ancient partnership is key to complex life with mitochondria retaining their own DNA. Now let's turn our attention from the maternal line to the paternal line. For this, we look at a different part of our genetic makeup, the Y chromosome. Most human cells have 23 pairs of chromosomes in their nucleus. These carry the bulk of our genetic information. One of these pairs determines biological sex. Females typically have two X chromosomes. Males typically have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. The Y chromosome, therefore, is unique to males and it holds the key to tracing paternal ancestry. Just as mtDNA is passed exclusively from mother to child, the Y chromosome has its own distinct inheritance pattern. It is passed down almost entirely intact from father to son. Daughters do not inherit a Y chromosome, so if you are male, your Y chromosome came from your father, his Y chromosome came from his father, and so on. This creates a direct, unbroken paternal lineage. It's like a genetic surname passed down through the male line for generations. How do scientists estimate when mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosomal Adam lived? They use a fascinating concept called the molecular clock. Imagine DNA as a very, very long text. Over time, as this text is copied from generation to generation, small typos or mutations can occur. These mutations happen at a roughly average rate. Some parts of the DNA mutate faster than others. But for specific regions like mitochondrial DNA or parts of the Y chromosome, Scientists can estimate this average rate. This predictable rate of change is the basis of the molecular clock. Think of it like this. If you know how often a clock ticks and you count the number of ticks, you can figure out how much time has passed. Similarly, by comparing the DNA sequences of different individuals, scientists can count the number of mutational differences between them. If they know the average rate at which these mutations occur, they can estimate how long ago their lineages diverged. They can calculate how much time it took for those differences to accumulate. This allows them to work backward in time, towards a common ancestor. For mitochondrial Eve, scientists compare mitochondrial DNA sequences from diverse populations worldwide. They count the differences and apply the known mutation rate for mitochondrial DNA. This gives them an estimate of when she lived. The same principle applies to Y chromosomal Adam. Researchers compare Y chromosome sequences from men across the globe. One of the most common questions is whether mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosomal Adam were a couple. Did they live at the same time, perhaps even in the same village? The answer, based on current scientific understanding, is almost certainly no. Genetic research indicates that mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosomal Adam lived thousands of years apart. They were not contemporaries, they never met. They were not the first couple in any sense. They are simply the most recent common ancestors for these specific, sex-linked pieces of DNA. Current estimates place mitochondrial Eve as having lived earlier than Y chromosomal Adam. Most studies suggest mitochondrial Eve lived somewhere around 150,000 to 200,000 years ago, likely in Africa. Y chromosomal Adam, on the other hand, is generally dated to a more recent period. Estimates vary but often fall in the range of 100,000 to 150,000 years ago, also in Africa. 
The exact dates are still a subject of ongoing research and refinement. New data and improved methods can lead to adjustments in these timelines, but the key point is the significant gap between them. It's important to understand what most recent common ancestor MRCA means in this context. For mtDNA, Eve is the MRCA. How is it possible that all surviving mtDNA lineages trace back to one woman, Eve, and all Y chromosome lineages to one man, Adam? Part of the answer lies in events called evolutionary bottlenecks or genetic bottlenecks. Imagine a bottle filled with marbles of many different colors. These colors represent genetic diversity in a population. Now imagine pouring out most of the marbles so only a few remain. These few surviving marbles now represent the genetic makeup of the new, smaller population. Much of the original diversity is lost. This is a bottleneck. Human history has likely seen several such bottlenecks. These are periods when our ancestral population size may have shrunk dramatically. This could be due to various factors, perhaps severe climate change like an ice age or a devastating disease outbreak or a natural disaster like a massive volcanic eruption. The Toba supervolcano eruption around 74,000 years ago is one event hypothesized by some to have caused a significant human population bottleneck. Though the extent of its impact is still debated, it illustrates the kind of event that can drastically reduce population numbers. When a population goes through a bottleneck by sheer chance, some genetic lineages might disappear completely. Others might survive and become more common in the subsequent generations. The study of mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosomal Adam has provided profound insights into human origins and migrations. One of the most significant findings is the strong support for the out-of-Africa model of human evolution. By analyzing the diversity of mtDNA and Y chromosome types across the globe, scientists have found the greatest diversity within African populations. This suggests that Africa was the cradle of humanity. Our species, Homo sapiens, originated in Africa, and then much later groups of humans migrated out to populate the rest of the world. These genetic markers act like breadcrumbs. They allow us to trace the paths our ancestors took as they spread across continents. Different mtDNA and Y chromosome lineages, called haplogroups, are characteristic of specific geographic regions. By mapping these haplogroups, scientists can reconstruct ancient migration routes. We can see how populations moved from Africa into the Middle East, then fanned out into Asia, Europe, Australia, and eventually the Americas. It's a grand narrative of exploration and adaptation written in our DNA, a testament to the resilience and curiosity of our ancestors. Research into our genetic ancestry is a dynamic and ongoing field. New discoveries are constantly refining the picture. Scientists are sequencing more genomes from more diverse populations. They are developing more sophisticated analytical tools. So, who came first? The evidence points to mitochondrial Eve. She walked the African plains tens of thousands of years before Y-chromosomal Adam. But their exact timing, or who was first, is perhaps less important than what they represent. They are not the absolute beginning of humanity, they are specific milestones on our long evolutionary journey. They are the individuals whose particular genetic threads, the mtDNA and the Y chromosome, have, against all odds, woven their way through countless generations to reach every one of us living today. Mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosomal Adam were not alone. They lived within vibrant communities of other early humans. These other individuals are also our ancestors. Their genes, carried in our nuclear DNA, contribute to the rich diversity of traits we see in humanity. Eve and Adam are special because their specific maternal and paternal genetic lines, respectively, are the only ones that have survived unbroken to the present day across the entire human population. They are like two lighthouses, shining their genetic beams across the vast ocean of time, guiding us back to a common shore. Understanding these genetic ancestors connects us to something immense. It connects us to the deep past, to the struggles and triumphs of those who came before us. It reveals the intricate dance of chance and necessity that shaped our species. It shows us that despite our diverse cultures and appearances, we are all profoundly related.